So let's see if we can uh, try to solve all your problems on understanding color Doppler, especially understanding the color Doppler waves and making sense of the waves. How many of you are obstetricians here? And radiologists? Let's few radiologists here also. No, all obstetricians, gynec or MBBS. So that is what makes it more important that we get trained about understanding how to interpret this color Doppler wave. Because if you don't understand, you, you are always dependent on the radiologist on what he is reporting and then you sometimes, as we are not very confident uh, in uh, our uh, uh, understanding in our values or understanding the values, we, we get very confused what is PI, RI, uh, how to interpret these waves. So I am going to simplify the whole thing for you so that you can all decide and deliver patients safely. So here are two waves, let's talk with them. This is a, a, the color Doppler box which you see here. When you get an image, whichever area you want to see, you put this color Doppler button on. So this box comes and whatever is moving inside will be colored. It, is, it does not mean artery vein. Even if you put it on the abdomen, the intestinal gas will also give you color. It's a movement. If the movement is towards the transducer, it will be red. If it is away, it will be blue. And if they are, if the blood flow or whatever is moving very fast, it will be yellowish or whitish in color, all those areas. So that means the uh, flu fluid or whatever is going very fast in that area and where it is slow. Now, it, if there is a very slow blood flow, you will not see it on color Doppler. So you put the power Doppler button on. Power Doppler gives you single color. It will not give you blue, red and this thing. It will give you orange or whatever color you like, you can ask or feed in your machine. But that is non-directional because you will see slow vessels but it does not tell you whether it is towards the transducer or away from the trans. So non-directional blood flow is seen by power Doppler. And power Doppler is used for spiral artery blood flow in the endometrium for your fingers if the blood flow because this will the small blood vessels will not be picked up. Now when our heart beats we have systole, diastole, systole, diastole. And when the systole ventricle breathes the blood flow goes from the left ventricle to the arch of aorta to the aorta and to all the arteries. So when the heart pumps, the blood flows forward. And when the heart is in diastole, the blood still goes forward and does not come back. That is the normal physiology. Why? Because all our arteries of young people are muscular arteries. So we have the external coat, the muscular coat and the internal coat. So when you have a muscular coat, when the blood comes with power, the artery will expand and let blood go. And that is your systolic wave. So from the baseline, this is still here, is your systolic pump, which your heart is pumped in all vessels. Now, when the heart goes in milli milliseconds of diastole, the artery will come back to its normal position because of the muscle. So when it comes back, it still pushes blood forward. So that is your diastolic flow. Okay, so systole and diastole, that's what we have to remember. I'll show you in the waves also, but briefly I'll introduce. Now, if your artery is good, muscular, healthy, it'll have a systole and it'll have 30% diastole of the systolic wave. So your resistant index will be 0.7 in all the arterial vessels, 0 0.72, 0 0.73, 0 0.74. Now, if your artery or who, the patient's artery is atherosclerotic and the muscle coat is not there, then it will not expand much and it will not come back much. So when it does not expand much, the blood goes faster. So you get a higher systole and you get a very low diastole. So the systole and diastole ratio is dist and the resistance will be 0 0.8, 0 0.9 or even 1 or 0 diastole. So that means that organ is not getting blood flow in the diastolic phase. So if it is not perfused in diastolic phase, that organ will ultimately get damaged. Because our kidneys, our liver, our ovaries, our uterus, our intestines need blood in systole this much and 30% of the systolic blood in diastole. That's normal requirement of all the vessels. Now if there is a physiological phenomena where new blood vessels are forming, like pregnancy, like ectopic pregnancy, like follicle maturation, like endometrium midterm, then the blood demand is more. And selectively that artery dilates a little. 
So you still get systole, but instead of 30% diastole, you get a little more diastolic flow. So let's say half, 0.5 RI yoga. So that means the impedance or the resistance of that blood vessels is reduced and more blood is going to that organ in diastole because that organ needs more blood at that time. At the time of ovulation, at mid-cycle endometrium, at the time of pregnancy, trophoblastic blood flow, uterine blood flow, all these vessels will dilate and let more blood go in the diastole. So the resistant flow will increase, decrease, the pulse tality will decrease, pulse tality index, PI, RI, and the SD ratio will get changed. These are the three ratios we look, which the radiologist will give you the values or the machine will value. But this is how we understand these values. So let's go and see how, how we can interpret in. So we're going to try to tell you the techniques which have Broadly explained, I'll try to tell you what is a normal abnormal flow in the uterine, umbilical, middle cerebral, fetal aorta, the fetal veins, the inferior vena cava, the umbilical vein, the ductus venosus. We'll try to discuss the role of uh, Doppler in the growth retarded fetuses where it is very important. We'll try to understand the value of Doppler in fetal anemia to pick up fetal anemia and what are the present Doppler, what is the scoring system for fetal growth and how do you time your delivery and it's a little bit about 3D, 3D Doppler or 3D color flows. So the basics of Doppler is that in a vessel the RBCs are flowing to that organ and that organ needs RBC because RBC is carrying all the oxygen and the plasma is carrying all the food particles to it. So the blood has to go forward to that organ. Now whenever something is moving and you strike it with, a f uh, with any sound wave, it is going to reflect back because movement. Depending on the speed of RBC going forward, the reflection is going to be faster or smaller. So that, uh, that reflection is the Doppler beam, the ultrasound beam is coming here, that will be reflected back and that will give you the systolic wave and the diastolic wave. Okay? So systolic wave, the diastolic and diastolic wave, and from a baseline. So peak systole, end diastole and the baseline. That is how we see. So now this sound energy is reflected from, if the RBC is moving faster, you will get a more faster systole. So that means your peak velocity here 40, it is showing meter per second. So 40, 50, 60. So if the velocity is very high, that means the vessel is narrow and it is going faster. And if the diastole is very uh, too much, 50% of the systole, that means the vessel is dilated and letting more. More blood flow in physiological situation or in benign pathological or cancer. So this will determine the, the transducer sending the sound waves. The sound waves, as we know, the physics will penetrate, reflect, refract. So when they get reflected back, uh, the amount which is reflected will depend on what it is striking. An amount it penetrates will depend on the consistency which you have already learnt in the physics. So we get a peak systole, we get an end diastole and we get a baseline. And this is one cardiac cycle which I told you, systole and, and that's the cardiac cycle of the patient. Or if we are uh, looking at the fetal blood vessel, that's the cardiac cycle of the, uh, of the fetus. Then you have the color box and then you put the Doppler button on. When you put the Doppler button on, you get a dotted line in the color box and you get an equal to sign. That is the gate. You can increase the gate or decrease the gate. And you can angle the sound, uh, uh, the waves. So it is as uh, direct to the RBCs flowing. Now the machine will automatically do the uh, recent machines automatically do that. So we don't worry about angle correction, which we used to in our times. So, and then you'll get if you get the gate correctly on the artery, you will get this. If you get the gate on the vein, you will get the vein. Sometimes you can get both of them, the artery on one side and the vein on one side. Vein will be continuous because veins don't pulsate. An artery will get the systole. So we will measure the peak systole, we will measure the diastolic slope, we will measure the peak diastole and we will calculate all the ratios. Now these are also calculated by the, uh, by the machine. The resistant index is systole minus diastole divided by systole. The pulse tality index is systole minus diastole divided by the average. And the SD ratio is systole divided by diastole. All these ratios will tell you how much blood that organ is getting. If these ratios are raised, that organ is not getting good blood. 
it is it is normal and if these ratios are low that means the resistance to the blood is less so whichever ratio we are going to follow is going to tell you this ideally we do follow all the three and calculate or you get all the three in it so so you get the doppler indices systole ri or resistant index pi or pulsed alt index and sd ratio resistance index means this vessel this much is 30% of the systole in normal arterial blood vessels so the normal resistance index of all our arteries in our body will be 0.7 or around 0.7 less than 0.8 more than 0.65 let's say so if you don't need to let it's exactly 0.72 or 0.73 or 0.74 but that is how you interpret it if it is 0.8 it is high resistance if 0.9 it is very high resistance if it is 1 it is zero that means that vessel is totally resistant and not letting blood go go in the diastolic flow so it's a very bad sign in any artery adults fetal whatever Similarly, pulse stability index, if the vessel is tight, the pulse stability index will be high. So, the pulse stability index is more than 3 or 4 it, uh, in the report or maybe 5. That means that organ is not getting good blood. It's only getting in the systole, no, not in the diastole. And similarly, the ST ratio, systole minus diastole, if it is half, it is uh, well dilated. If it is 0 0.7, one third, it is tight. So, that is how we interpret all these ratios clinically by looking at the waves only now how do we do it we get the box in first first step you put the box wherever the, you feel the vessel is here's the umbilical cord the box will come so you zoom that area of interest and then you apply the color doppler the narrow color box and then you adjust the velocity scale on the machine so that picks up the velocities it's not necessary that you put the box and everything will come the machine adjustment is equally important so this now this is too much of velocity so this is known as elizing so we will reduce the gain color gain so we get a good clear picture of the artery and the vessels so we get a good clear of blue and white rather than and that you can see on the scale on the side of your screen which will come so you adjust adjust that uh, accordingly so once we adjust it you get a neat clean wave you get a blue and right correctly as vein and artery then you put the doppler signal pulse wave gate wherever whichever artery or vein you want to study that equal to sign should be come there and you will get the good wave and three good waves if you get will the machine will automatically calculate or you will do a manual measurement or you'll do systole and diastolic measurement and get all the ratios so these are the steps how you obtain a good wave it's very important to get three clear good waves for measuring or, or doing it let's uh, study the placenta or let's study the uh, what happens here so we have the placenta we have the uh, basal plate which is attached to the uterus and from the uterus there are utero spiral arteries and uh, <coughs> Uh, that is very important to understand how and that, that, that will be forming the placental veins so this is known as the basal plate now this is seen as black halo in the placenta in between the placenta and the uterine wall so that means there is no accreta that is how we and these will go into the placental cotyledons the the fetal blood and maternal blood do not mix they are by a membrane the impure blood is coming from the fetal arteries umbilical arteries into the side and an exchange is occurring here and the pure blood is going through the so uh, one single umbilical vein two umbilical artery we'll talk about and we'll show you how that also happens so this this has to be clear so this unless you know this physiology you will not now what happens is the uterus lining has about 120 spiral arteries when the zygote is coming pregnant zygote is coming from the fallopian tube into the uterus on day five after fertilization it is going to stick once it sticks then it starts burying in the area which starts burying is the trophoblast syncytial trophoblast and this will bury into the uterus so whatever spiral arteries are in that area will get torn off or ripped off and form placental lakes so if the placental invasion is proper the first wave by 12 weeks and the second wave by 20 weeks then all the spiral arteries in the trophoblastic plate will be dilated or buried or torn off so their muscular car, uh, 
is gone. So they become like veins. And that is what is needed because we need more blood to the placenta now. If that happens, so the spiral artery, the uterine artery, the radial artery, the arcuate, the spiral artery, and here is the syncytial trophoblast coming. So this syncytial trophoblast is burying into it and will form a villi in the placenta. So here is where, where the placenta is forming in that area and that spiral artery which was very muscular with a resistance of 0.7 will now dilate and have a resistance of 0.5 and this will allow more blood from the uterine artery to come the uterine artery which was because of the spiral artery was not pushing blood in diastole more than 30 percent will now start pushing more blood and it will dilate also because of the estrogen progesterone of the pregnancy now let us look at the uh, fetal side 